The Rochester Adams Highlanders invade Dragon Stadium tonight with first place in the OAA Red on the line. We've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Pre-game is underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Stop by their location at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss, joined again by former Dragon quarterback Kevin, <coughs> excuse me, Kevin McCormick. And Kevin, last week, the Dragons had a heartbreaking loss at Oxford. And now they've got a tough schedule the next three weeks. Oxford, or Adams tonight at West Bloomfield, and then homecoming against Clarkston. But welcome to the OAA Red. Yeah, it's really a tough conference, and you know it doesn't get any easier tonight against a Highlander team that's 4-0. and And tonight is going to be really big on finishing drive, executing, and really just being on schedule, especially against this offense, which we'll get more of that as the game goes along. But you're not going to get to touch the ball a lot if you're Lake Orion, so they're going to have to do their very best to finish every drive they got. Adams comes in at the start of the season. We were talking with Coach Petrito about this. They were picked to finish last in the OAA Red. On week five, they're four and oh. Tells you what the prognosticators know, but they've got a balanced attack. Quarterback Reno Waters has just steered the ship and they've got a real weapon in Matthew, what is it, Humbert. Yeah, you know, when it comes to high school football, anything can happen, especially when kids are still growing, developing. It's one of those things where, you know, they, they looked like they were going to be pretty bad this year, but now they're 4-0. They literally had flipped the ship on its head, and it's one of those things where, again, it's just weird. It's just weird stuff happens. Yeah. In the OAA Red, the winner of tonight's game really can claim first place in the division. Clarkston and West Bloomfield are two games behind, and after tonight, should Orion win tonight, and as we talked about their schedule, all the top four or five teams are all going to be jumbled. And don't be surprised if Oxford makes a late push, it's life as usual. Yeah, this is really a pivotal game for the whole OA Red as a whole. Lake Orion is going to kind of have to be bearing the flag for the rest of the for the rest of the teams because if they let Adams go five and zero, oh, Adams could kind of run away with the whole thing, and then everybody's going to be kind of jumbled in for second place. And for Lake Orion, you know, if you if you drop this game and now your focus shifts to okay, let's just make the playoffs here instead of focus, let's try to win the whole thing. So uh, again, pivotal game, but especially for the Dragons. Mm -hmm. We watch the teams come out, and I guess you could use the term quiet intensity on both sides. Should be a good one tonight. Stay with us. High school sports are meant to be fun. We love to represent our school and we care about our sports. We know you do too. And because we all care, it can sometimes get intense. So here's our perspective to make the experience more fun for everyone. We know it's easy to react and yell during games, but we all make mistakes. It makes the game more enjoyable when we hear you cheering positively. Our friends are human. Respect their decisions. They aren't perfect. When you feel like yelling at an official, remember that you are representing our school. As much as we want to win, just remember to keep the energy positive towards all. During the season, we spend a lot of time with their coaches. They have a tough job. You can support them by accepting their decisions. And being thankful for all the time they have devoted to making us better. Showing empathy and support to everyone involved is important. Remember, you are the ones that set the example. Thanks for coming to our games, taking us to practice, and always supporting us. We couldn't, we couldn't do this without you. 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 We couldn't do it without you.
Pre-game is underwritten by Sarah, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Located at 3800 South Lapeer Road, or give them a call at 248-393-2222. Just before kickoff, the Lake Orion Dragons welcome in the Highlanders from Rochester Adams High School. These two teams have had a battle over the many years. We were talking with Coach Tony Petrito on the field before the game, and his first year here was 2003. He came in and promptly led Adams to a Division II state title. And I told him it seems like only yesterday, and he was a new coach here, and he said he felt the same way, that the time goes by so quickly, and the Dragons take the field. So nice to see the middle school band members coming out and joining the marching band for the fight song. Our officiating crew tonight, our referee is Andrew Hayner. Headlinesman is Ron Townsend. Line judge is Nick Huff. Umpire is Rick Krause. Bob Conway is the back judge. Rashad Spencer is the field judge. And Alex Sheehan is the back judge. It is a local Oakland County crew. And mostly talking with uh, headlinesman Ron Towns, and he said most of the games have been in the OAA this year. And with that, PA announcer Roger Smith announces the playing of our national anthem. First quarter is underwritten by Jets Pizza, with two convenient locations in the Orion area, proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information or to order dinner tonight, visit JetsPizza.com. 
and it's also underwritten by Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion. Visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com or give them a call at 248-693-4422. Well, Kevin, this is very simple. Adams is on top of the division at 4-0. Lake Orion's right behind him at 3-1. The Dragons want to tie it, want the division to be a tie so they can make their move next week at West Bloomfield. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it, this is a crucial game, very crucial game for Lake Orion. And again, like, I, like how we said in the pregame, the rest of the division is really kind of hoping LO keeps Adams uh, or, you know, gives them a loss tonight because that keeps, keeps it wide open for everybody else because if Adams gets a win tonight, they could possibly run away with it, especially with the difficult schedule that LO has left. Um, this is a pivotal game for both teams, but more importantly for the Dragons, especially coming off of a, a crucial loss to Oxford on the road last week. Number 28, Aja Jakapuri is back deep, and also number two, who unfortunately we don't have on our roster. Jakapuri takes it at the seven, out to the 10, 15. Trying to get across the 20. I think Ball's he lost out. football. He lost the football. Dragons are saying they have it. And the officials agree. A turnover on the kickoff gives the Dragons a ball. First and 10 at the Adams 20. Wow, what a way to start. Yeah, that that is a big play for Lake Orion, and that's one that they definitely need, especially with the way that Adams runs their offense again. We'll see that when Adams gets an offense after this after this possession. But this is super big, especially considering that you know the Dragons do get the ball to start the second half. They have to find a way to preferably put six up on the board here. Jack Polari looked like he was trying to get too cute, trying to find that extra yardage, kept springing along the 20-yard line and lost control, Dragons take over. T.R. Hill back at quarterback. He keeps it up the middle. Inside the five, down to the three. Welcome back, T.R. Hill. Yeah, obviously he hurt his shoulder against Troy two weeks ago, and you know you have to think, you know, how much would they really use him on the ground this week, but very first play, they run the, they, they run the power read with him, and he almost gets to to the end zone there, sets him up a first and goal here from, from the three yard line. Coach Bell told us in pregame, no restrictions on him. He's free to go. So first and goal from the two, Dragons come out in the full house backfield. Handoff inside, Jaden Barrero in, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. And that's how you start, especially capitalized well for a turnover right there. And you know, the Dragons again, they don't get too key on there and they simply just go straight power offense, run the ball on, it takes them two plays to go 20 yards. And again, that kind of, and now that puts a pressure on Adams here. Uh, Cause now, you know, if you think, you know, if you were to score, you know, if each team were to score in each p possession, you know, you can kind of stay on that track. But now Adams is really, really behind the eight ball now in terms of, uh, in terms of number of, number of possessions that they have in this first half. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Jackson Vasquez to hold. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. We played 50 seconds, and the Dragons jump out to a seven nothing lead. Yeah, that is yeah, that is huge. And now. Now, hopefully, we get a look at this Adams offense, but you know the way they run their offense, it's similar to how Army, Navy, all their own forces run their offense. They want to lull you to sleep running the ball. And as we talked about, they're not used to playing from behind. Exactly. Seven to nothing, they're thinking, yeah, we can come make it back. They get down 14 nothing, 21 nothing. That's when they're going to struggle. Exactly, and you know, and they're not the biggest team in the world, which is why they run the offense that they do. Because it, again, it's the reason why the armed forces in college they run the offense that they do, because they just don't have the size to run a standard offense, and it's the best way that they can compete. Um, but you know, as I was saying in pregame, the biggest way to stop Adams is to get them off schedule. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you make them play from behind, force them to kind of hurry up, which is something that they don't really want to do. That they don't want to play from behind. They don't want to throw the football. 
Um, they want to eat up clock, have more time of possession, um, and really limit the amount of possessions that, that, they're all, that the other team has. Will Hoffman had it teed up. The ball blew off the tee, so it's teed up again. He approaches, line drive kick, taken about the five by number two, who I'm sorry we don't have a name for. He brings it out to the 30, and Adams will take over first and 10. The scoreboard for the first half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union, the full service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000. So number 10, Rhino Waters, his full name is Ryland, goes by Rhino, takes it in, tries to get off the left side and is stacked up and drop for maybe a half yard loss. Yeah, they started off in the pistol right there. Again, they tried that veer option and he, he could have cut that up for, you know, maybe two or three yards, but he kind of just ran into his own man and uh, didn't really try to bounce off him as they're going empty set here now from the shotgun. Second down, empty backfield, trips to the left, twins right. Brandon Nupchuk was in on that last tackle from his defensive end position. Couldn't see him back. He was injured it two, two weeks ago against Troy. It's a, a crucial part for that both offense, offensive and D-line for L.O. And again, this Fake is the handoff on the end of round, and Waters kept it. Got maybe... They're getting, they're, they're getting four they're or five on that one. They're getting four, yeah. It looked like maybe only got stopped for three, but... But again, this is what I say, you know, get Adams off schedule, you know, put them in third and six, third and fives. Something that they, you know, they might have to throw the football here if they don't get any yards. Single wide double wing. From the gun. Waters back, looking, got pressure, throws complete to the 45 yard line to Lakin Tillotson. He'll have a first down at the 45. Yeah, it was just a simple roll out there. A nice, easy way to throw the ball here, especially, you know, for an undersized team like this. You know, just get your guys out in space. Let him be able to see his passing lanes there. Twins right, single wide left. Tight end set up on the right side on first down. Waters on the keeper again, gets a couple out to the 47. It'll be second down. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how these teams match up in the trenches here, because the Dragons D-line, uh, really that front seven is, it, they are stifling. They they put up a very good wall when it comes to stopping the run, and Adams obviously a team that likes to keep the ball on the ground. So, uh, you know, it's gonna be a team, it's gonna be a matter of, you know, which side breaks first. Adams, does not give us height and weight, so we have to guess. But I don't think that they're, I think Lake Orion's line is bigger. Handoff up the middle, out into Dragon territory at the 49. Mateo Humbert on the carry, and we're going to call his name a lot tonight. Yeah, again, this is what Adams likes to do. They like to just kind of paper cut you up and down the field. You know, that was a game three or four, but now it puts him in a third and four. And if, if, if you do math, you know, three times four, that's 12 yards. That's yep. the first down every four plays. So, and right now, again, they're in that third and four, third and three range. So, um, and don't be surprised if they don't get the first down here, I wouldn't be surprised. As long as they don't lose yards here, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it on fourth down here in plus territory. Trips right, single wide left, receiver set up on a wing left. Now motion this side, and Waters on the handoff, he's got a, fir or on the keeper, he's got a first down, down to the 30, or the 42 yard line. First down for Adams. Yeah, they've, they've really modernized their offense, because back when I played, their offense was it was it wasn't really spread out. It was a really compact. It looked did look more kind of like Army and Navy's offense with more tri triple option action, more wing backs. But here, you know, they've gone empty set. They've compacted in like right now. They're back here in the pistol. Yet they still got a three receiver set. Yep. 
first down. It's Waters, Waters on the keeper. Breaks a couple tackles, gets up near the first down, and he's going to be really close. It looks like he's going to be about a yard short, but this game for the Dragon defense is going to be crucial for the outside backers in the safeties to really read their keys and make sure they're watching the ball because it's very hard to lose the ball at that mesh point. So again, these, these outside backers and safeties are going to really have to make sure that they're staying at home and that they're reading their keys, as Coach Blackstock always says, for his safeties. Read your keys. Ryan Rochelo made the tackle from his... Actually, he's kind of as a, a monster back now. He's playing. He's on the line. Waters got pressure, throwing deep. That's a wobbly ball. And we got a flag... I'm sure that Austin Kahn is going to get called for pass interference. Yeah, they're going to call P.I. I think he, yeah. I think the ball was caught either way. but He had a good hold on Tillotson's arm as the ball was in the air. And they're going to decline it. It'll be first and goal from the five. 6.43 to go here in the first. Adams is on the move. Yeah, that was just a simple motion there to see if the Dragons were in man or zone. No one ran with the motion right there, so you have to think it's zone, and Waters looks back toward the sideline for the play call. Waters on the toss back to Mateo. He's, he, he was going to get in it if he didn't slip right there. Yeah. Or to Mateo Humbert, down to the one. Mark Petrito, the son of head coach Tony Petrito, is the offensive coordinator. We're looking over on their sideline. They have two coaches signaling plays in. Only one of them is the real one. And that's just again so that you know the opponent can't really tell who's calling plays or they can't maybe yep. steal some signs. We've yep. we've seen this in the media before, stealing signs. And uh up the middle, number twenty four, Paxton Battershell on the carry down to the one. Adam's hurry up, going there. hurry up. They think they have the matchup here, probably QB sneak. It is. It is. Yeah, he's in. And he's in for the touchdown. Waters on a one-yard run. Yeah, that was uh, that was kind of equivalent to the Philadelphia Eagles tush push on that yeah, one. Yeah, pretty you, close. As soon as yeah. they got down inside the one, you knew that was probably going to be a touchdown, especially essentially having two downs to get a touchdown there because it was third down. But if they didn't get it there, they, they were definitely going to go for it on fourth down. So. Number 15, Dan Seymour, is on for the extra point. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 5.39 to go here in the first. We're tied at seven. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year as we look at the replay. And you're right, it was kind of like a Philly tush push to yeah, get it across. It. Yeah, that kind of, everybody packed in tight, and you know, they, they were literally inside the one in that one. So that, it was like odds were against the LOD line on that play right there. Anyhow, back to our read. You can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and much more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $12 a month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account, and we'll finish after the kickoff. A little pooch, little kick, pooch kick taken on the 13, trying to cut it outside. Jackson Vasquez brought it over the 25 up to the 27, where the Dragons will take over first and 10. Anyhow, to get started, 
go to www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. And we have a couple of them in the booth with us tonight. Aiden Novak doing his usual ex excellent job doing stats for us. And Ryan Simmons is over here doing our ONTV graphics. First and ten. Empty backfield. Vasquez on Little the counter. Action. Broke a couple tackles. Got up close to a first down. Yeah, near ref is got nine on the carry. Near ref over here has put his arms up in the air. Looks like a first down. It is a first down, and that was that was a trap play. Yeah. That's all that was. That was a, you know they ran the trap back end off the jet motion going right. And it's, a yep. trap is one of those plays where if you if you hit it right, you can hit it big. But if you don't block correctly, that play is getting blown up in the backfield. He did a good job being patient, waiting for his holes to open. He lines up in a slot left. Now it comes in motion. It's TR. Oh. TR on the TR Hill on the carry. That was kind of a wildcat look with Barrero at quarterback and actually handing the ball off to TR. Yeah, it's hard to miss Pereira with those late or the bright neon shoes, but yeah, that was a little wildcat yeah. action right there. Uh, I think the ball, I think they had the ball actually. Yeah. They fumbled the ball. I thought TR had it, but it looks like there was probably, a, looked like there was a problem in the backfield with the mesh point, so they actually lose about three yards on that one, so now they're off schedule here. So second and 13, ball spotted on the 35 yard line. Double wide, double slot. TR looks, throws complete, close First to down. midfield to number five, Kyle England, senior wide receiver. It's good to see it's, him get involved early. Yeah, it is. It's marked on the Dragon 49 yard line, and it'll be a first and 10. That may have looked like an easy throw from T.R. Hill, but that is a tough throw. He was over on the far left hash, to, had to throw it all the way back towards the right hash, and then some, and had to make sure that that was on the line so that wouldn't get jumped by the DB. But again, it's good to see England get involved early here. They're, probably gonna need, they're definitely going to need more of him as this game goes along here. He lines up wide left. T.R. on the keeper gets over midfield down to the 48 of Adams. It'll be second down and seven. You know, and as we said before, Coach Bell said there are no restrictions on how much they would run with TR despite his shoulder injury two weeks ago. He didn't play last week against Oxford. Um, but again, you still have to, you know, even though Coach Bell says there's no restrictions, you definitely have to think it's probably in the back of his head just how uh, much you want to use him. Usually you'll put that pad on under your shoulder pads just to give a little extra measure of protection. Yeah, he does look to have like a little brace mm -hmm. on his left shoulder right there. So Hawkins is the back. He gets the handoff, gets it around the left side, tries to cut it upfield, gets a yard maybe. Don Diego Hawkins, junior running back. Yeah, he had some room out there. He had some speed, but he kind of was running lateral a little bit too much. He had he had a lead blocker out there. I know there wasn't a lot out there, but if he put his foot in the ground, cut that upfield, he may have come and got himself, you know, three or four yards and made this a little bit more of a, a manageable third down here. And that's something that, you know, Coach Bell pre has preached ever since he started coaching when he ran the jet sweep is as soon as you see, see that hole, cut it upfield. Don Bakari on the tackle for Adams. It'll be third down and six. We have trips to the right, single wide, left, single back. TR back to pass. Trying to get outside, does. He's gonna tuck it. Did he get the first down? Hey, it looks like and gonna be a late, late hit. hit out of bounds. So I don't think he had that first down. It looks like the far ref has him about a yard short, but it's not gonna matter. If this, if this flag is what we think it is, a late hit, then yeah, they will be getting that first down and then some. And the, the head linesman has got his foot right on the 39 yard line which was the line to gain. There it is. Yep. As you get a replay of that, and TR, he felt the pressure. Backside, rolls out here, and again, uses his speed, gets to the edge, and... Tuck it away, TR, tuck and it away. That's, that, that's, you know, obviously, I'm glad they called yeah. that one a little hurdle over there, over the bench. That's a, that's a, that was an iffy call. He it was, was close. Yeah, he was close, but we'll absolutely, we'll, we'll, we'll take the first down. 
Oops, I've got a we have here. a timeout called by Rochester Adams with two. They haven't stopped the clock yet. So they're going to have to Some get to back with the. I believe there's about 2.20 left on the clock. Yeah, the time a clock operator's got to reset. So, yeah, <laughs> that clock is still going over yeah. there. But, I mean, yeah, I believe there's about 2.20 left. I think I think that's when it was called. No one's caught it yet. Yeah. Both Ella or Adams. You think somebody would be saying, "Hey, that clock is going down," but yeah, no, no. Well, they'll reset it. Yeah. At least you would hope somebody would catch that. I don't think they. they I, don't I don't think. I don't think they have. I don't either. think they spotted it yet. Yeah. Now they yeah. stopped the clock. It's still going now. They, they, nobody's yeah. caught this yet. Wow. Literally a minute and a half. Is, now the, there we go. There okay, we go. now reps it. Okay. The back judge keeps the official time. Yeah. And I'm sure he saw it said, wait a minute. Yeah, a good like minute, it, minute and a half yeah, right off the it, clock it, right there. It was called at 2.20, and the clock now says a minute 18. They're calling call it 211. 11. Okay. So they may have lost about, you know, five to six seconds there, but regardless, obviously better yeah. than losing 60 seconds. So. so they got TR under center here. Trips to their left. Now motion. Jackson Vasquez up the middle, spins inside the 15. Up oh, close to the... He's going to have a first down. The ball will be spotted on the 16. And they ran, again, the trap action. They ran the fake jet sweep right and ran the trap backside. They do give him the first down on that, actually. Yes, they do. But Vasquez, he's good between the tackles. He's very shifty, and, and you know, he's not the biggest guy. I was kind of pleased to his favor when he is between the tackles because you can't really see him. Brendan Eliason checks in at an offensive tackle position. Oops. And he's a big one. So they got Pacmar to the left of T.R. Hill right here. They give it to him. Trey up the middle. Gets inside the 15 down to about the 12. He's a run there, four yards. That was yeah. just simple halfback uh, inside zone right there. Nothing a lot. Not a lot to that play right there. So second down and six from the 12. Lake Orion taking their time here, They're not in any rush. Backs in an eye, heel from the gun. Vasquez in motion. It's TR. TR trying to get, breaks it outside. He's in, touchdown Lake Orion yeah. Dragons. TR Hill from 12 yards out. Yeah, they again, they ran the uh, power read off the jet action and he didn't hand it off, he kept it himself, that being TR Hill. And he's trying to go up the pipe. There wasn't much there, he bounced it back right. Everybody flowed left because of that jet sweep. And the backside was basically wide open besides the receiver in the DB over on that side. It so did, didn't look at the snap like he totally had control of the ball. Dead looked like a high snap on that Which kind of messed the motion up, and he had the wherewithal, bring it down. He tried to go up the middle and then just broke it outside and went in uncontested. That's, that's kind of the rule of thumb. If the play ever breaks down, go where the blocking is. Yeah. But he did, and there was no blocking there, so he went back side and... Um, everybody flowed left because of the jet sweep action. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. And we have to give some credit with that to Nick France, who is also the long snapper and has done a magnificent job this year. As you see the replay here, yeah, he tried to go to the middle. There was, no, there was nothing there. He bounced it right and thread the needle right there between the DB. Good blocking out there by the receiver for Lake Orion, that being number 16, Jamari Cooper. He, he literally blocked his guy all the way in the end zone. And, and you know, that, and that's and that's really good. That's really good to see, considering that, you know, a lot of times when it comes to receivers, if the play is not going to them or to their side, you, you know, they, you could see them take a play off. But Jamari Cooper, that play was technically not supposed to go his way at all. And he was still blocking his guy basically through the back of the end zone. And that honestly is the, difference between scoring on that play and not scoring. So shout out to Cooper right there for, you know, again, playing 100% even though the play wasn't even directed towards him towards him at all. 72 yards in nine plays. 12-yard run by T.R. Hill for the score. 
Hoffman puts a foot in it. High end over end kick That's into the see. end zone. The ball come out first and 10. Yeah, his first kick of the game was all right. Second kick was a swift kick. Third one went through, mm -hmm. went through the end zone. So. I definitely don't think I had my money on the game being, you know, having 21 combined points here in the first quarter, especially with the way that both of the teams play, kind of a slow ground and pound offense for both sides. But And as we talked about, Adams will lull you to sleep running the ball. They will. And when they think you're keyed on the run, that's when they'll they drop back the top, and, yep. and th throw it, lateral it. That's why these safeties for LO, it's crucial that they read their keys and they don't get sucked into this handoff action. Waters up the middle. He's going to get maybe a yard. Yeah, because that, that middle interior and the middle line backers, they're going to do their job when it comes to stopping that dive action. It's really when it comes to the speed options and the, you know, quarterback going play action, you know, again, those outside backers and safeties, it's going to be crucial that they're really going to be, um, you know, they're really going to be, whether this game is made or broken on, on the defensive side here. Waters again. As I say that, the interior, Not yep, the interior D-line, yep. Standing up strong right there. Brandon Nutchuck stood him up and didn't move. Again, very good to have him back. That's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter here. We played a quarter. Lake Orion Dragons lead the Rochester Adams Highlanders 7 to nothing. The Orion Neighborhood Television will be celebrating Community Media Day on October 21st. Community, Community Media Day is an annual celebration of voices that bring awareness to the importance of free speech and accessible media for all individuals to have their voices heard. ONTV is inviting anyone to our open house from 5 to 8 p.m. with snacks and refreshments to see what we have to offer the community. We are also inviting nonprofit organizations to record a quick PSA if they would like throughout the day from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Very important day. I'll be there. If you haven't been to the ONTV studios, it is on Joslin Road at the home of the Orient Center, the current Orient Center. We just got notification from the press box that number two is Cam Daywood. Here a third six here, and we'll be surprised to see maybe a little play action here from Adams. Nope, they go straight pass. Incomplete, intended for number 24, Paxton Battishell, and he was met. Yeah, that was just a little quick. Quick pass action right there from Adams, and Waters tried to look over the middle, and that could have been a hospital pass right there, honestly. It, it wouldn't have mattered whether he caught that ball or not because he would have been short, well short of that first down. And he got rocked. Yeah, he did, yeah. So it, that was dangerous ball right there. But regardless, sets up fourth down here. Dragons look like they'll be getting the ball back here. Fourth and six, Vasquez back to receive the punt. And that was not a good punt at all. Not a good punt. Caught on the sideline by one of the Dragon players, and they are going to mark it out at. Looks like it's going to be right at midfield, or maybe just before. Yep, right, yep, at, yep, right midfield. at midfield. Yep. So that was really only a net gain of about, say, maybe 18 20. yards. Yeah, yeah. 18, 20 yards. So, and again, this is how we were saying, you know, Adams does not like to play from behind, and so this is even more of a pivotal drive here for the Dragons. A score now will be huge. Yeah, because any any score, whether it's a field goal, obviously, you know, you want you want to hit Pater, but if you can go up by two possessions, really put the pressure on Adams to have to, you know, hurry up their offense, that can really, really shake things up for them. I'm looking for something from Jamari Cooper on this drive. You know, you look like he's, he's in the slot right there. Yeah, second he's in receiver. The slot. And looks like we got a timeout by it. Looks like a like, guy was late getting on the field right there. Looked to be number 68 yep. for him, Aiden, Aiden Reeder. Looks like, uh, yeah, he was 
And there is nothing worse that will drive a coach absolutely mad, but to be on first down, you know you're supposed to be out there playing defense, and you're late getting on the field. That's especially especially since we're at the halfway point of the year. You know, the, yeah. you know, you can't put this, okay, this is the first game. No one really knows who's in. They're rotating guys. No, you're, you're, at, you're at the halfway point. Again, like I said, first down, you know you're supposed to grab it. This is like the third or fourth yeah. possession of, of the game. you got to know to be out there. Now that's another waste of time up from Adams. Now they have one left in the half, and that could be crucial coming down the stretch here towards the end of the first half in terms of, you know, can you put some points up on, on the board, especially with Adams already being behind schedule because they fumbled the opening kickoff. So now they're already behind the eight ball. Yeah. So every possession is crucial for Adams. Um, but... Right now, the Dragons have got to find a way to put some points up on the board here on this drive. And it's good to have T.R. Hill back. We've seen his magic tonight. But let's give some credit to Brody Thompson for the job he did last week filling in for T.R. Motion this side. Jamari Cooper gets Cooper. the ball. Dangerous Taken tackle. down by a shoulder pad. Yeah, that was, it was a... It was a weird looking tackle on that one. Jackson Schaffner got his hand inside his shoulder pad and up. just hung on. It, it was not a horse collar because he had him by the side, but he got his hand in there and just did not let go. Yeah, Cooper tried to stiff arm and kind of grabbed the, his arm and yeah, reached inside that shoulder pad and yanked him down. It looked awkward, but it was clean by the rules. So, Ian Vasquez in a slot right. TR. Going around the right side, trying to pick up a block. Gets out of bounds at the 44-yard line of Adams. You kind of see maybe some lingering effects of that shoulder. Not as we get a replay of that, as I'll kind of, I'll, I'll kind of show what I'm yeah. seeing here. Because he, he runs right to the outside. He could put a plant's foot and cut up he field. Could but have, it, yes. But he kind of, he, he just said, I'll take my yards, go out of bounds, avoid a hit. And maybe that's something that the coaching staff told him, hey, you can't be putting your foot in the ground yep. and taking hits like how you did last week or the week or the week before, excuse me. We don't want to see you out again. I'm I'm sure Coach Bell had a, had a meeting with him. Yeah, you feel good, but take care of yourself. Back's in an eye formation on third down. TR up the middle, got a first down inside the 40 to the 39. Yeah, that time, there's no place for him to step into bounds, so he had to take the hit there. But again, he you know, needed three, got about five on that one. And that's kind of, kind of, it's yeah. going to be kind of how they're using TR Hill. I noticed when he went down, he was wrapped up and he turned, turned his and body fell on his right shoulder, yeah. which was his non-injured shoulder. Again, yeah, you know, so that's that's being smart. Again, that's being yeah, smart as a quarterback. Again, you know, it, you feel invincible until you're not, and then that's when you start to kind of key in. Okay, how can I make sure I keep myself healthy? Tr back to throw looks. Ah, uh, yeah, he just shorter on that yep. one. Yep. Jamari Cooper had. Uh, Tommy Offer right in his back pocket. Yeah, it's, it's rare now you see quarterbacks kind of do the old fashioned, you know, kind of high and tight, you know, Peyton Manning style sort of motion. You know, a lot of quarterbacks, they really like that, that three quarter arm slot, kind yeah. of that little Patrick Mahomes action on that one. That's kind of what he tried to do. He just, he, he just short on that one. That's really all that one was. Tight formation for the Dragons on second and 10. They're on the rocket. Toss back, Vasquez. Picks up a couple extra yards after contact. Got five. It'll be third down and five. Good old-fashioned rocket left there, as, as they used to call it. And, you know, that used to be kind of, you know, the, the base of their offense was the jet, belly, yep. rocket. That was, that was kind of the, the trifecta of plays. And obviously, you know, you, know, you have to develop your offense o over time. But, you know, there's still wrinkles of the old Coach Bell in there here and there. And, and you'll see it with plays like that. Third down, trips to the right, single wide left. TR back. He's got the bubble wide open. Coming outside, looks, throws, caught. Oh, throw from caught TR right by there. Kyle Englund. First down, Dragons. That's his second grab of the night. Hopefully, we need to look at that one, but that was a very, very good throw from TR Hill. Rolled out right, felt the pressure through it on the run. And Good job by the receiver to settle in in between the yes, zones and not exactly. run into not run into coverage on that play. He splits wide left with Vasquez in the slot. Handoff up the middle is Barrero. Got a couple. 
down to the 21. Barrero's kind of had a quiet night outside of that first touchdown he had. He, that's, I believe that's only his second carry of the game. So we'll see if maybe they try to integrate him in a little bit more as this game goes along. But they've, they've been kind of rotating backs early here. We've seen uh, Hawkins. We've seen Pacmara. 9.30 to go. And as we look to the north, there's a beautiful sunset taking place out there. TR looks, throws. Again, just, uh, just, just a little low intended for England, just yeah. just at his feet. And that's a tough throw. I mean, and you're on the, again, you're on that far right half. You gotta you gotta use all your hips there and throw all the way back to it. You know, it might only you know it might look like a five yard curl route, but in reality, that you know you're throwing the ball at 15, 20 yards across the field. And it's a tough throw, but again, he's kind of short on a little bit. He's not really coming well, over the top as much. But as the quarterback throw, he spins his body. He's you know, if you're going to get a good pass, you spin your body. And I'm sure he's still got a little discomfort in there. Yeah, I would say even though it's on his non-throwing shoulder, mm -hmm. as we get a timeout here. But even though you know, a lot of people don't realize you use your whole body when you're throwing the ball. Even right. though it is his non-throwing shoulder, you got to put some oomph into that other one. And you know, there might still be some pain there for him. Yeah. As we get, as we get yeah, at look at sunset, that. Sunset, Doug, there you go. That is gorgeous. It's, it's nice. You know, we're, that, we're at the end of the month here, end of September. It's still warm outside. You know, yeah, it is. Colors have not quite turned yet. I don't know. This yeah. is a, you know, it's not super hot, but not super cold either. And so this is very nice here. I don't know of too many places that you can go to watch a high school football game that equals what we have here in the Lake Orion community. In a couple of weeks, when the fall colors are out, this this place will be spectacular. Yeah, especially the trees right yeah, behind all the behind both the soccer and the football stadium. Yeah, it definitely looks nice. So it is third down and eight. Dragons come out. Twins left, single wide right, single back in the backfield. Tr got pressure, throws, caught, complete. Down to the five, down to the three. Good stuff. Again, they're getting they're getting Jamari Cooper Jamari involved right there. Cooper. Yeah, you called his name before the drive started. Yep. He almost got that touchdown that, that, that you called before that drive started. But that oh, was Oh, they're gonna bring him back. Give it again. Yeah, give, yeah. give him the touchdown. Anytime touchdown, Jamari Cooper on that one, man. But no, that was a, that was a really good play. You know, there was pressure off the back sides. We get a look at that one here, but as we get the back end look at, at the play and Cooper First and goes. goal, Sam Barkley in at one of the tailback the positions. Set. Here's Barrero again. Barrero stopped. He was stoned at the line. No gain. Yeah, they tried to just run a little power left there, but they ran it all the way from that full house set. They ran it from the halfback that was on the far right side. He actually lost a yard. Yeah, it's he lost a few yards. Second and goal from the three. Again, a little wrinkles the old coach bell going back to that full house set. They, he ran it for a while, you know, like kind of like the mid 2010s. Oh, he, he ran yeah. that full house set. Looks like Barrero's a single back here. Back. Jackson Vasquez in. Touchdown, there Lake Orion Dragons. The misdirection. From three yards out. Dragons got a little cute there, running the misdirection, but it worked out for him. And not surprised that it is Vasquez on that one. Again, he's very good between the tackles. Will Hoffman out for the extra point to increase it to a 14-point lead. 7.59 to go in the half. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. The Dragons increase their lead to 21 to seven. Hey, for nearly 75 years, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce has been dedicated to creating a healthy local economy and building a strong environment for economic growth and stability. They represent businesses to the government, coordinate educational forums, host networking event, events, and advocate for business-friendly legislation and promote community. The Chamber is a 501c6 nonprofit organization 
funded through chamber membership investments, sponsors, and fundraisers. Follow them on Facebook or visit their website at orionchamber.com. Yeah, that was a, you know, they started at midfield, and that was still a 11-play drive. Uh, that just kind of shows you what offense that they're trying to run in the 11-play drive. They started the they started the drive off with 11.53 to go in the second quarter, and they ran about four minutes off of that clock. Good mix of run and pass on that drive, too. Adams takes it on the seven. And taken by number two, who we found out is Cam DeWood. So he gets it out to the 28 yard line where Adams will take over first and 10 with 7.54 to go here in the second quarter. Dragons up by 14. So now if you're Rochester Adams, you can't really look at the scoreboard. You're already behind schedule. Not it's, yet. It's just a matter, it's a matter of just finishing this drive getting some points up on the board here, keeping this, to one, keeping this to a one possession game. Twins right, single wide left. Receiver set up on a wing right. Waters. That's a good start. Complete to Waters. Nolan Ferris, who was split right. He gets a first down out to the 39 yard line. Dragon, or I'm sorry, the Highlanders. Go and hurry up. Single back in the backfield. From the pistol. Waters. Humboldt. Up to the 44. And Neps again in there on the tackle. Five. They're calling it second and six. And Adams, now they changed it. Go yeah, ahead. Adams, they keep lining up, hurry up as if they're going to run a quick play, and then they look, look back towards, towards the coaching staff there. Yeah, the reason they do that, they get a look at what the Dragon defense exactly, is. Exactly, yep. Yeah. Hand off, Humble. Going to be about a yard Up short. Up to the 48, he's going to be about a yard short. And I think, I think the objective here for Adams is to try to run as much clock as they can. Because again, Lake Orion does get the ball to start the second half. Yeah. So if Adams can go down the field, eat up as much clock as they can, and get seven points, you know, you're kind of back on schedule in terms of how many possessions that you get. And if you can get a stop to open up the half, then that changes the whole complexion of the game. Right here, it's third and one. This is where Adams wants to be. They're on schedule in terms of this possession. Third and one. Single wide left. Motion this side. Waters got pressure, caught. First down. Still on Still his breaking tackles. Is Humbert. He did a great job of keeping his feet moving. Right there, just leaks out in the flat. Yep. Had to turn around to get the ball, and then it's just keeping his feet moving. Yeah, they ran a little misdirection there, and they ran play action, booting them out left. And you might wonder why they throw on the ball in third and short. It's because if they didn't get that pass on third and short, they would have ran it on fourth and short, and most likely would have gotten it. So trying to see if they can kind of get a little two-for-one action on that last play. On first down. Waters on the keeper, in the open field, broke a couple tackles, got down to the 25. And now it looks like Adams kind of in a rhythm here. They're Again, they're running the ball effectively, and they're more important, they're doing it right up the pipe, which is usually where Lake Orion's been pretty stifling for most of this season. And right now on this drive, Adams kind of have their way inside the trenches. 20-yard run on first down. Trips right, single wide left. Under five minutes ago here in the first half. Yeah, they stop and they see what Lake Orion's defensive alignment is. Now, while they're doing it, one of the D linemen drop back into a linebacker spot, so it changes their look. It's the, it's the chess game. Humber. He's in for the touchdown. 
he got around the right side and turned the Jets on. Yeah, that that was a that was an inside run play that he bounced to the right side, and, and he had so much speed that he got up to that second level before anybody really knew he was there. Yeah. And you know, the, the Adams they they wore down the Dragons on, on that drive right there. They they said, all right, enough with all the cute stuff. We're just gonna run the ball. Yep. And that's exactly what they did. A few passes wriggled in there here and there, but. An effective drive for Adams, and now that puts him back within one possession here. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 434. Dan Seymour for the extra point. So we get a replay of that. Yeah, it was. It was a little inside run, and he just bounced it outside, got the blocking that he needed on that one, and used his speed, and there was no one out there. But, yeah, that was, that was only, that was only 72 a, yards, nine plays, Roger Smith just said, and we have no reason to doubt him. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, it was a quick drive. Uh, it was. It, it looked like Adams was starting off trying to, you know, maybe eat up, well, they did eat up some clock, but uh, I don't think they expected to get as many chunk plays as they did. So now we get into what we call you know, the most important four minutes. The last four minutes of a half and the first four minutes of the next half because the Dragons have the ball, they score, they get the ball back to start the second half, and that can be a huge point swing. Yeah, that four-minute drill as, as we get the kickoff here, I'll, I'll finish after this play. High short kick taken by Vasquez on the four. You gotta see He's him. He's gotta see him. In the open oh. field and brought down at the 37 yard line by a shoelace. We do have a flag back here at the 20 yard line though. And it's coming from the back judge. This is usually the area of holding. Well, obviously we'll see here. Don Bacari brought him down. Yeah, it's going to be against the Dragons. That'll be a spot foul. Ooh, black in the back. Yeah. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the spot of the foul. And those that's that's it's strange to get a block in the back on the kickoff. When you're looking at everybody, you know, they're coming towards you. So that's, Yeah, they are, but you know, the returner comes by and we've seen it and it's you try to tell them to let up, but when that guy that's coming downfield sees a guy go by, he turns around. And if you're trying to engage him, next thing you know, you're you hitting see his him name play. Yeah, you see the, yeah. exactly the rule of thumb the coach would always say. Try to tell him when he turns, let him exactly. go. Yeah, the rule of thumb is usually, you know, you see the nameplate, you know, yeah. take it. But it's hard, especially when you're in the heat of the of moment is. down there on, on the field, you know. But So first and 10 from the 10, backs in an offset eye. So he gained about three or four that, in that one. Uh, that was Jamari Cooper on a run. He set up in the tailback position. Uh, this is, again, this, uh, this is a big drive. This is where you can really emphasize yeah. the four-minute drill, which, you know, it's not like the two-minute drill in sense of urgency. You, you know, you can't add some urgency to it. The Dragons probably will have, will have to go a little bit faster as they're backed up in their own territory or deep in their own territory. But, you know, they can, if they play their cards right, they can find the work the way down the field right at the end of the first half. As we approach the four-minute mark. So, I got they got 10 Dragons, on the play clock here. second and six. TR up the middle, close to, he's gonna be about two yards short. It'll be third and two. And Dragons emphasized on that last play, they waited till that play clock got with inside yeah. 10. So they're, they, are, they are trying to work the clock here, not allow Adams to get the ball back here, but yeah. it, it all starts with, again, staying on schedule, getting each first down. They'd they, love to have a touchdown, no yeah. question. And they do have all three timeouts left. Now they got two. Oh, two. Excuse me. Yep, two. He's going to be close. I don't yeah, think he I don't got think there. He, yeah, I don't he think didn't he get got there. It. Vasquez on the carry. They tried to run the trap, and yeah, he's going to be short. He yeah. may have actually lost about a half a yard. It's so. going to be fourth and two. And that's not what you want to do if you're Lake Orion. I mean, you were already backed up in your own zone. You you had to at least get a first down and keep that clock going. And they send Will Hoffman out. The wind is kind of 
pregame coming, it was, out, yeah. coming out of the northeast we're feeling it here in the booth yeah pregame was going from the northwest to the southeast and it looks like based on the flag it's still kind of going that way so often's going to do his best to get some velocity on this ball cam dewood is set up near his 45 there you go good line drive action. Nice That's kick. Good. We'll takes a try uh, adams lake orion bounce and DeWood picks it up, brings it back into Dragon territory at the 41-yard line with 2.27 to go. Dragon's up by seven. Yeah, that was, that was not what you wanted to do if you were that Dragon offense. Really, really didn't give your defense a long time to rest out there. And now with 2.27 to go, Adams, they only have one timeout, but, you know, this is just like practice. You know, you're at the 40 40-ish yard line here, so you don't have yep. to necessarily hurry up here. You can kind of keep running the same offense that you've been running as you're sitting here in plus territory. Will Hoffman in at an outside linebacker position. He's kind of in a monster back. Waters, looks, throws, Good tackle complete. Out there, Nolan Ferris on the reception. And if you're like Gain, gain of about three. Yeah, and if you're like Gordon, you will allow that all day long, especially with you know the time dwindling down here just outside two minutes ago. You'll you'll allow a three yard hitch route. Single wide left or single wide right. Tight formation to the left. Humbert is the lone back. Now Waters comes back in the gun. On the keeper. Gets around the corner. And he's down about the 24. Called the 25. Yeah, Lake Warren hasn't, they have not had an answer when it when it has come to. Austin Kahn came up from his cornerback position to get him out of bounds. Twins left single wide right. Humboldt, the lone back from the pistol. Uh oh. Whoops, there was no Humbert there. Yeah, that someone someone, the, someone missed the assignment. I, I don't know if it was the quarterback, Waters, or if it was the halfback on that one. But I either. have to think it was Humbert because he went to the right and Waters turned, tried to hand it off to his left. Based on where that blocking went, yeah, I believe that was on Humphrey because that play looked to be going left, at least you know, in that direction. And uh, Waters had to turn, uh, had to turn, tried Humbert. to do his best, turn that into wine right there. He did his best. Waters on the carrot goes nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I think he made the wrong read on that one. He, that that jet sweep motion on that read was, you know, had some room out there, especially with the receivers being out there, and he kept himself and. He immediately just fell down because he knew that he had nowhere to go. Now, one time out here, 50 seconds ago in the half, it's third and long, so. Rochelo and Nupchuk came up and made the stop. You'd think they'd pass the ball here, but they Third kinda, and nine. They got everybody compact in here, but it's still, yeah, it's still an empty set. They got everybody bunched in, but. Double wide, double wing. Over the head of Ferris. Yeah, that was number a, 12. Yeah, that was a mesh concept, and if you don't know what a mesh concept is, it's just where you run two drag rods right over each other, and and looks like we're gonna have a clock issue here. We have here. a clock issue. Clock is stuck at 34.9 seconds. Dan Seymour is out to try a 40-yard field goal. The clock shows 34.9 seconds left. Yeah, this is going to be yeah, it's going to be 40 yards to the right hash here. Wind at his back. Ball is down. Kick is up. And the him. kick is good. Yeah, he was he was banging him for about 50 yards yeah. in pregame, and he almost hit a 55 yarder. So, not a surprise. He was pretty accurate when I was watching him pregame. So, not surprised. Into the been, into the wind. Into the wind too. Yeah. So the fact that he was almost getting the 55 yarder into the wind. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised that they brought him out there. And you know, in high school, 40 yards isn't necessarily a chippy, but when it comes to if you have a strong kicker to do it, you know, a lot better than in my day. 40 yards for me was a was a pipe dream. <laughs> so now, if you're like Gordon here, 34.9 seconds. You, 
That's the uh, that's the old uh, straight ahead with the squared off yeah. shoe. But yeah, we'll see what Lake Warren does. It. I mean, they got options. They could maybe try to take a shot here or two. They got two timeouts, so it's really going to depend on what happens on this kick return here. If, if they can have some decent field position, wouldn't be surprised to see them maybe try to take I, a shot or two. I have a feeling Coach Bell's going to be very content to go into the to go to halftime with a four point lead, Especially knowing he gets get the, ball, the ball. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's really going to depend on what happens on this kick return here. If they, if, they can, if they can get to around the 40 yard line here, you might maybe see a little screen action. Trey Pacmara, Vasquez, and Jamari Cooper are all little punt pooch kick. Vasquez takes it on the 20, tries to cuff it, cut it up field, and gets it out to the 27 yard line. Yeah. The clock, I believe, is working again. It shows 28.2 seconds. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what Coach Bell does here. He, he might just line him up there and kneel the ball down and get to the just get to the half. Don't want to risk anything more. Yeah. Don't want to risk a turnover in your own territory and give the ball back to Adams. Maybe they'll run like a draw play. So, you know, yep. Maybe try to run a play to see if you can get anything, but. It looks like they're going to kneel the ball down here. Like Ferrero got, yeah, is got, back mm -hmm. in a in a safety position. Yeah, they got everybody to come back in there. Looks like they're going to be content here. Yeah. Like how you said, taking the ball to the half, up four. As we're going to get a timeout here. Adams going to take their timeout. So interesting move here from Adams. I don't think it's going to change whatever Coach Bell does here. But well, you know. There, there is not much that either Coach Bell or Coach, Coach Petrito have not seen over their coaching careers. Yeah, but it, but again, four point lead going into half. You know, Lake Orion, you, you know, you, you wish you wish you could be up, you know, again by two possessions, but you know, it's, it's a tough game, right? You know, yeah. you, you know, this was going to be a rollover. It, you know, it was a very good start for him, and they definitely benefited from that kickoff turnover to open up the game from Adams. Absolutely. But to have a four-point lead over your rivals here going to the half and you get both to start the second half, you know, that's, you know, that's all you can really ask for. DR takes a knee. Yep. I thought maybe they might maybe try a little trickery, a little fake kneel, but. And the teams will go to the locker room. It's halftime, the Lake Orion Dragons. Lead the Rochester Adams Highlanders 21 to 17. Halftime is underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on, on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state of the art collision and repair facility. Stop by their location at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. And Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion, visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com or give them a call, 248-693-4422. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon Football on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome back to the field the 2024 Lake Orion Dragon Marching Band. We're going to have to go out there. We're actually going to have to steal on the Dragon Tracks. And the tickets from the Dragon Highway. Today we're going to have to the first part of their competition show entitled Fade to White. It features Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles, Gone Away by the Offspring, and Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. From majors Sam Tadeo, Walter Thompson, Kyle Kirkland, and Willow Stefanow, the field is yours.
Halftime was sponsored by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Stop by their location at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. And Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion, visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com. Dot com, or give them a call at 248-693-4422. Halftime is over. Dragons will receive the ball to start the third quarter. And Kev, this is the kind of thing you want to get the ball, get on the field and score. Yeah, this is a big drive for Ella. I know I've been saying that the whole game, but every drive is a really big drive for him. Um, but this one especially because, yeah, you get the ball out of the half and you're already up by four. So if you can get a touchdown here, that conflict, again, puts Adams on the hot seat. They have to kind of hurry up their arms to, you know, tad bit that they're going to be a little bit behind schedule. And so, you know, playing playing front is even playing from behind. Um, and, if, you know, when it comes to the way that Ella runs her off it. So, again, they don't have to really change much up. They, they can stick to their normal game play here, ground the pound, a little TR action uh, when it comes to running the football. Um, but again, again, they don't have to get too cute here. Just kind of stick to the game plan here. Defense has been playing pretty good. Besides that, you know, besides the end of the first half, they were pretty good for most of that first half. Dan Seymour will kick off for the Highlanders. Trey Pakmara is deep, and the kick goes into the end zone, where the Dragons will take over first and ten on their twenty. The second half scoreboard is underwritten by Cutter Rug Flooring a local family-owned and operated small business proudly serving Lake Orion and surrounding communities. Fully licensed and insured, they specialize in carpet restretching, flooring repairs, as well as full-service installation and sales. Their mobile showroom brings the shopping experience right to your door for your convenience. 586-531 three two eight zero or cut a rug flooring installation dot com first and ten for the dragons from the 20 empty backfield there it is on the handoff to vasquez balls loose adams is saying they have it i think they do what a is this like the first yep. <laughs> first fourth? Adams fumbles the opening kickoff. The Dragons re recover, and now in the second half, the Dragons return their favor. Yeah, they ran they ran the trap action, and it was it was a first down <coughs> for I believe it was Vasquez on the carry and fumbled the ball. And again, this is just a repeat, essentially a repeat of first half. Well, it's flipped now on its head, and this is crucial because this. Is, now Adams can definitely play their style of football here. So if you're like Corey and you have got to got a hold there, you, you can't can't let Adams get in the end zone here. At the very least, hold them Ferris, to a field goal. Ferris Nolan is the quarterback. He's got pressure and he's he's going down. Fighting got back. He the got back to the line, line scrimmage. Yeah, no, he was stopped back there deep in his own territory I, or deep in his own backfield. That, that looked like a loss of three or four. I just got a text from Sammy Taramina that says that Waters, Rhino Waters is on crutches on the sideline. Interesting. We I don't can... know what happened, but now <coughs> we've got Nolan Ferris is the quarterback. That is huge for the Highlanders. It is huge. From the pistol on second down. So, Handoff to Mateo. So now that's huge here. Is now, yeah, now you got a junior. I mean, granted, they're running the sophomore out there, 
or excuse me, um, they're running a junior out there, so they got another junior in there, but. Be, re be ready for a heavy dose of Mateo Humbert here in the second second half. Looks like we got a dragon down over there. We have a there. dragon down, I can't quite see the number. Yeah, I can't see either. Looks like it's like the left leg. 50. It's kind of hard to see out there, yeah, but we'll, we'll see when he gets up. We'll when he, find out. But regardless here, it's, yeah, no, this is interesting because, yeah, now you got a backup QB in there. Chelsea Henning comes out. Fine, fine athletic training staff here at Lake Orion. And has been for years. Yeah, she was, yeah, she was yeah. there when I was there and, and before, so. And it looks like players getting up. That's maybe. Alex Hensley. It looks like it was probably just a cramp based on yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, he's kind of, okay. When you jog off the field, it's probably a cramp. Yeah. And it, at first, I was kind of worried. He was kind of holding his left leg area, and it looked, looked like he was in a lot of pain. But yeah, cramps will do that to you. But so he got up under his own power. So we'll probably get some fluids in him. Hopefully, we can see him back out there so ASAP. It's third and six. Adams has trips to the right, single wide left, single back in the backfield. Yeah, Handoff. Nowhere to go. Humble gets swamped. Brandon Nupchuk got in there like he was shot out of a cannon. Yeah, that was, again, good to see, good to see Brandon getting, getting in there, because again, he, he's been injured. He was, he, he was at least injured for the Troy game. Didn't know exactly if he was injured before that, but he was injured for the Troy game. And, uh, but it's good to see him out there. And he looks like he hasn't missed a beat, so. He lost a yard, it's fourth and seven. And Adams is gonna go for it. Yeah, we'll see if they maybe try to draw him offside here. Regardless, if they, if, they, if they do get it offside, they'll make it a little more manageable fourth down. From the gun, Humbert is alongside. It's like man coverage here for the Dragons. Rolling, looks, throws. Incomplete, broken up by Austin Kahn. That was a, that was a smart on play. Fourth down. Yeah, he didn't try yeah, to exactly. intercept. Exactly. Yeah, it. no, that was a smart play from Kahn. He actually, you know, obviously you see the ball in the air coming right towards you, and your your yep. your instinct is to catch it. But on that one, he he kind of just it really he went after and kind of just dead balled it. He's gonna look at that, but he just kind of he made sure that it was it was, a, it was a, incomplete. But good play for Austin Connor. More importantly, crucial stop for that Dragon defense. And you know, you have to think maybe that has to do with partly with the backup QB. That was kind of an errant pass on that fourth down. But now Dragons back in business here. Still up by four. Just kind of reset the half here. Yep. We'll, we'll just say that you know, we'll just say this is the start of the second half here. Vasquez in motion. It's TR. TR up the middle. Ball security. Got is be about important. seven. It'll be second and short. Let's we see what happened. Great look here from Joe Johnson. And yeah, Khan had it. He <laughs> did. He had it in he his hands. And he hit the ground. And he made sure that it was incomplete. Just dropped it. And you might be wondering at home, you know, why didn't he pick off that ball? And that's because you know they get because they get the ball. Now back up here, if they start the drive at the 29-28 yard would, line. They would have had it at the 10. Yeah, if he had picked that off, it's, I mean, he, he would have yep. fell down. He, yeah, they would have had that back on their side of their own 20-yard own line. Smart heads up play by the senior. Guerrero up the middle now. Guerrero, he's got a first down. And now, uh, and now I think this is the where he, The headlinesman had him marked short of the 40. The line judge came right in on the 40, and that's the spot they used. And now I think this is where you're going to kind of, uh, for the Dragons and Coach Bell, you're going to kind of get right back to square one, run the ball, keep it up, excuse me, keep it out of harm's way, and play your game there. You caught a break with a defensive stop, and now you get to take advantage of it. Vasquez tripped up at the line, down for no gain. Yeah, that was his first carry since the fumble on the previous drive. And Give the ball right back to him. Yeah, no, it's smart. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to go away from a player who 
had a mistake like that, that's probably the worst thing you can do in terms of confidence in his mental state. The best thing to do is just to let him know that you know you still have his back and you're still confident in him, and you can do that by giving the ball back. Granted, he didn't get a lot on that play, but regardless, still keeping him involved is really the big thing. England split, split wide left. TR looks. Like Jamari Cooper. Cooper. Caught. Jamari Cooper caught, turned around, got another yard, first down Dragons. He barely got tripped up. If he didn't get tripped up, he could have been off to the races on that one. He, he's been That's been his bread and butter so far today. He's been running a little out around a curl route, settling down, catching that ball, spinning towards the inside of the field and trying to use his speed. He almost scored on that earlier in the game, and if he didn't get tripped up on that one, he could have been off to the races. Travis Acker checks in at a fullback slot. Backs are in an I formation alongside T.R. Hill. T.R. takes it. Tries to head up field, gets a couple. Yeah, he doesn't look, like he said, we've seen a couple things where he may turn his body to defer contact, but he's played pretty much without restrictions tonight. Yeah. They have kind of used him a little bit, you know, not as much when it comes to the rushing attack. We've seen in previous weeks that, you know, they've really tried to make him a focal point of, of the ground game, but he still has been somewhat a part of it, but definitely not nearly as much as we've, as we've seen in the past so far this year. And again, that's, you know, Coach Bell just keeping an eye on his QB. They don't want to take him completely out of the ground game, but you don't want to overwork him either. Rochelo in motion, toss back, Vasquez gets a few. For those wondering... In the uh, bottom of the seventh, the Tigers are up three to one over the Chicago White Sox. Runners on second and third here. So it's third down and five from the Adams 44. A first down pickup now would be huge. Yeah, that was like Jamari Cooper on that last carry. They had him in the tailback spot. They had him in the, it, it was a strong eye and they had him in as the tailback. And that was an interesting play, but I mean, he hit that hole and he, he hit it fast. Vasquez in the slot left. TR looks, there throws, caught. England. First down at the 37. Nice to see England being a big part of this offense. Yeah, tonight. yeah, no, exactly. No, it's they've they've really been passing the ball a lot more than we've seen in the past weeks. Maybe trying to, you know, give teams a different look when it comes to film and They've been doing a very good job of getting their skill guys in space, that, that being England and Jamari Cooper, guys who have speed, letting them catch the ball and use, use their speed to get some yards after the reception. Rochelle lines up at a tight end position. And Barrero falls forward for four. It'll be second down. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Barrero today. It's been, it's been a lot of Vasquez. And it's been a lot of T.R. Hill. And it's been kind of running back by committee. It really year. has. It, 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 obviously, you know, I'm not sure what happened against Oxford. Maybe they thought that, you know, what, whatever they did against Oxford wasn't the best. So I wouldn't say it's a knock to Barrera or any of those guys. I think they just have so many athletes in that halfback room that they want to get as many guys as they can involved. I mean, we've even seen Jamar Cooper back there as well. So they're, they're yeah. really putting everybody back there here. Trips right from the gun. Barrero takes the cut, cuts it up field, gets a couple. He's going to be about four yards short, and it'll be third down. You know, and having versatile guys, that's really just a Lake Orion program thing as we get a look at this last play. Barrero again, you know, couldn't get a lot, but did his best to just keep falling forward and pick up yard. But, you know, making sure that guys can play anywhere, especially the SEAL guys, has really been a Lake Orion thing for a while, even when it comes to outside of football I mean the coaching staff they want guys who play multiple sports and you know it shows here on the football field because you have guys you can you know like Jamari Cooper you know he's really built like a receiver but they have packages for him kind of like a Depot Samuel where they put him in the backfield. Acker and Barrero in the eye. TR up the middle got the first down and a lot more. There we go. Down to the 21. First down Dragons. 4.18 to go here in the third. Dragons on the move. First and 10 from the Adams 21. 
Let's get another replay. It was a real long developing play, but the blocking held up there for Lake Orient. T.R. Hill again going right up the middle right there, and they had a wide open hole. Great credit to that LOO line right there. We can't say enough about the job they've done this year. Again, up the middle goes Guerrero. And that's and that's always been Lake Orange offense. It's been built on that O line, and you, and you might think, you know, isn't every team built around their O line? But there are teams who they, they like to spread the ball. They like to, you know, really air the ball out. But Lake Orange is not one of those teams. They really like to keep things compact, and they like to keep it simple. And really, you know, they they want their strength to be the five guys up front. So on second down, single back. That was a good pull from T.R. Hill. He, yeah. he, he's not going to get a lot in that play, but that was a critical pull right there from T.R. Yeah, T. that was jammed up at the point of attack. Yeah. And, and he was wise to pull it back and get what he could. And we, you know, we talk about this offensive line. They are playing with a sophomore at center. Exactly. Braden Blackstock, and I know that name sounds familiar. We've watched him grow up. Well, he he has taken over the center center position and made it his own. Yeah, and and for good reason too. I mean, he he's a force on that O line. Okay. So third down, Tr back to throw. Got Looks him, throws. Cooper. Oh! oh, touchdown, Jamari Cooper. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. He kind of he kind of bobbled that pass right there. I thought he may have dropped it, but. He caught that in stride, a beautiful ball from T.R. Hill. It was just a simple post route right there, maybe even a little skinny post. Hopefully we can get a look at that, but that was, that was. And Jamari turned on the Jets, and the defensive back didn't stand a chance. Yeah, that, he, that was, again, they were, they did what, they pulled an Adams. They kind of lulled you to sleep a little bit, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, and then finally kind of, you know, it wasn't necessarily over the top, but they got the match that they wanted, man-to-man -man coverage with Cooper on the outside. And he did the rest using his speed and agility and made it an easy pitch and catch for T.R. Hill. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball is down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 234 to go in the third. The Dragons increase their lead to 28 to 17. As we get a look at that. Uh, yeah, T.R. Hill throws there across the middle. Right there. Yeah, I thought I thought Cooper bobbed it, but no, he just he just reached his arm out. It looked like he maybe bobbed it a tad bit from our view, but great look for there from Joe Johnson, our cameraman, sideline reporter down there. Hey, filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 17th at the ONTV Studios located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and line of dialogue that is to be included in in the film in their 10 minute film you will have until 6 p.m on tuesday october 22nd to submit your film on wednesday the 23rd the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m at the oxford seven cinema in oxford open to all ages it costs 30 dollars per team to enter and the winners will receive a cash prize i kick off taken on the goal line Ooh, you may have been a touch by back. Splits a couple, still going. Finally, Will Hoffman lays Wait a, a shoulder, shoulder yeah. into him. And that was That was the, at first the unknown DeWood. man. Yeah, and that, was, that was Cam DeWood. That was the unknown man. We didn't know at first, but that was that's a big return for Adams now. They're basically right at midfield. But for the film festival, to register, go to www.orionontv.org or call 248-393. 10, 60. As we get a look at that return right there, and he just ran right up the middle yep. of the return team. There was nothing to it, no, nothing fancy about it. He just, he got the right block and he found the seam. Double wide, double slot. Now motion this side on first down. Hand off to Humboldt. He gets a couple. And, and Doug, like how you said, I think we're going to see, or I think you're, you're, you're going to be calling his name a lot here. Um, in this second half, especially having the backup QB in there. Yeah. So again, we'll see we'll see how this backup quarterback can do here for Adams, as he is the same year as Rhino Waters is. That that being a junior, 
but nonetheless, obviously, you know. Waters is a sophomore. Is he? On, yeah. the, on the roster, he's Ferris listening. Ferris looks, throws, got a receiver, caught at the 20. Good throw by Ferris. A very good throw. He and put it on a rope he, out there. He did. That, that's the most we've seen Adams air out all night, and that was a beautiful, beautiful throw right there from Ferris. It was, it was just a seam route right up the middle of the field. That was complete to Connor Heifrich. A junior wide receiver. So first and 10 from the 20. Minute and a half to go here in the third. You like Ferris maybe calm down a little bit back there behind center. On the keeper, he gets down to the 15. He's a pretty big guy. Yeah, he's not as big as Waters is, but nonetheless still has some size back there at the helm for Adams. So he, he can still run that Veer offense that they want to run. Ferris is also the kicker. Yeah, he's a senior, and Waters is a sophomore. The second five here again, Adams doesn't really want to be. Second down, he only got five yards to go in terms of the first down. And they can't get a first down second. without getting a touchdown here. They have four, four receivers split to the right, single wide left. Now motion this side. And Ferris is going to keep it, and he goes nowhere. He got stoned. And even though he's just as big, you know, you know there you see little... Rocky Ariendo submarined him and brought him right down. Yeah, maybe it wasn't the best read right there from Ferris. You maybe should have handed that one off. I mean, I mean, you have four receivers out there towards the wide side of the field. You maybe think to hand that off, especially with, especially with how good this interior D-line has been for Lake Orion. But, Doug, I think that's probably going to be the last play here of, yeah, of the third quarter. It's third and two, and the clock's under five seconds. So we will take it down to the other end of the field. We played three. The Lake Orion Dragons lead the Rochester Adams Highlanders 28 to 17. Go mobile with Owen TV anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with Owen TV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch Owen TV programs in high definition on demand. Owen TV, working to bring Lake Orion to the world. If anybody wants an update on the Detroit Tigers in the top of the eighth here, now up four to one over the four White Sox. So six outs away from clinching the playoff spot. Who, who would have thunk at the, at the yeah. midpoint of the season that yeah. they'd be competing for a playoff spot? And you know what I really like about this is that from here on out, or once the playoffs start, They'll be off of Bally Sports, and everybody can watch everybody them. Everybody can watch them. Yeah, they weren't on Bally Sports for a while to begin the year because there was yeah. contract negotiations, all that jazz. And and at that time, it seemed like, hey, I don't think anybody really wants to watch them. But you know, who would have thought, you know, if you told me August 1st that this team would be in the playoff push right now, I wouldn't have believed you. Pitching, pitching, pitching. It's it's honestly amazing, considering yeah. that it's the only name they have back there is Scooble, and everybody else is just a collection of guys who just get the job done. They do their job. Here we go, third and three. Dragons got to do their job here on, on defense. Twins right, single wide left. Hand off. Humbert. I believe he got it just enough that second effort. I believe it got him the first down, and it did. He did. He got the first down. It'll be first and gold. McIntyre and Rochelo on the stop for the Dragons. So now, now this is it. It's first and goal to go. So, First and goal from the nine. So now this is where the Dragons now, can... This is where the Dragons can thrive here. You know, this is... You know, where where Waters was just looking over and seeing the play signaled in, Ferris is going over and getting the play from Coach Petrito. And they, they got to go here. They got three on the play clock. They're yeah. going to have to call a timeout. It, he's telling them to go, and they're either going to take a delay game here or take a timeout. We'll see which one's thrown. Timeout. Yeah, they got a timeout, and that's crucial. 
Yeah, and that's part of the readjustment, having the which backup having QB, the yeah. backup quarterback in, yep. is he doesn't get to read those signals sent in from the sideline. So he's got to go over and talk to Coach Petrito, get the play, come back in, give the play in the huddle. Yeah, and that's yeah, and that's, that's crucial because especially when when you're already down, you know you're probably you know because then you stay in this game, stay within one possession you know you're going to need those timeouts down the stretch here. And so, you know, not having that extra, because there's no two-minute warning in high school. So no. um, so you don't get that extra timeout near the end of the half. So you need every stop to play you can get if you're Adams. But so but here we go. They need to make it work, worth out here. They need to get seven on this drive. Twins right, single wide left, double wing. So they got an empty set here. Ferris on the carry gets down to the six. It'll be second down and six. Yeah, this is where the Dragons can thrive. Everything's kind of a little compact. Everybody's tied on the line scrimmage. This is where the D-line can really make their presence felt. And what's important is your linebacker's ability to fill. Exactly. It's crucial for the backers to fill that hole, right? As I say, especially the safeties as well. You don't have time to really read as long as you want to. As soon as you see that hole, you have to fill that gap. Just really just get bodies in the way and let guys come in and corral to make the tackle. Twins right, single wide left with a wing left. Now motion back the other side. They're going to pass it. Back looks, throws, corner of the end zone. Oh. He dropped it. He had it. He, he he, that was uh, DeWood. He stopped. Austin Kahn ran by him. He established his position, put his arms out, and didn't catch the yeah, ball. Yeah, it was frankly an underthrown ball right there from Ferris, but it ended up kind of working out for him in terms of he had an uncontested catch because Kahn kind of overran the play because Kahn was beat on that play, and, and, you know, and Coach Blackstock teaches his defensive back, if you're beat, don't look back for that ball because, in theory, that ball should be going over your head towards the yeah. receiver. But on that one, he went behind him. McCon didn't see it, and Dragons catch a break here. So third down and goal from the seven. Twins right, twins left, single back in the backfield. Going to try it again. Ferris back, caught, and stoned at the goal. Stoned at the one. Great tackle. That was number 15 out there for Lake Orion. That was A.J. Lights on that play. No, that, that looked like Trey Pacmara was there. Let's see a replay on that. I thought I saw a number seven get up pumping his fist. Re regardless, a really good play. Whoever made the play. Yeah. And now it's fourth and one. This is where the money's made here on the goal yep. line. So we get a replay of that. I thought it was, thought it was, uh, yeah, it was lights. Yeah, it was lights out there. He made yep, the play. you're right. He made the initial hit. He did exactly Troy what Mark Mara, Pac Mara finished it up. He did exactly what Coach Blackstock teach. Wrap the hamstrings, drive with your legs, and get them down. But here we go. So here we go. Fourth and goal from the one. Last time they're in the spot, they ran a QB sneak. We'll see if they do it again. Yep, it is. They did, and he's in for the touchdown. Yep. Ferris on the one yard run will pull Adams to within. Four. Ferris will also kick the extra point, I believe. They're going to go for two. Yeah, and that's that's a smart move to do here, that's, if you're Adams. That's what the card says. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, down. that's what the yeah. as they say. That's what the analytics say. You're down by five with you know under ten yeah. minutes to go in the in the game. You know this considering that they have a what seems to be a pretty good field goal kicker being within three. Go for two and make it a three-point game. Yeah, so Dragon, if Dragons can get a stop here, that that kind of makes things a little bit tougher for Adams. Two backs in the back, Phil. We, we got another timeout. Yeah, we have another timeout, and these are going to be crucial. Exactly, yeah, no, yeah Doug, that's, that's what I was saying earlier, is that they already took the first timeout on this drive. Granted, they've made it worthwhile because they, they've gotten the touchdown, but now you've wasted a second one. you got one left, so... If this game comes down to who has the ball last, it's, it's going to be tough for Adams to get that yeah. ball back, especially if Lake Orion is the one you can kind of eat up some clock. Because really all the Dragons have to do on this next drive, if they can get any sort of points, whether it's three 
or seven or, or and six. This is a huge two point conversion. Exactly, because if, if the dragons if the dragons can get a stop here, and then they can go down the field, even if they only get three on their next drive, that makes an eight right. point game, which means that Adams has to then go for two again, if they were even to get back to the end zone. So. Yep. This, this will change the game plan for Adams here, whether they get or don't get this. So here we go. They've got a split backfield behind. Yep. Looks, throws, got a receiver. He got, got there. Yep. What an effort. It. What an effort. What a dive at the end. It looked like he wasn't going to get close to that pylon. That was done by Tommy Offer, number five. Or no. It, it was, was that, 13. Yep. It was a. Uh, was that nine? No, that was five. That was Tommy Offer. And what a stretch he made to get the two point. Yeah, that was a very good effort. It looked like that was kind of a busted play. Didn't look like he was getting anywhere close. It, the Dragons came up and corralled well, and, but just that second effort, he only needed a couple of yards, and obviously we can't really see over on that side of the field, but we get a look at the touchdown before that two-button conversion. Great look here. And yeah. uh, Look at that camera work by Joe Johnson. Best in the biz. Yeah, Dragons were there. They were, and, you, you know, obviously we don't yeah. have instant replay here in high school sports, but... His knee may have been yeah. down, Doug. It may have been down. Once the ball ba breaks the plane, it it's does, all yeah. done. Obviously, you know, you know, again, we don't have that instant replay here, but nonetheless, though, Adams now within three, and this kind of puts the pressure on, on L.O. a tad bit. Now you got to make sure that you get some points on this drive. End over end kick. Somebody's got to get that. Oh, pick it up. Oh, you have to get it this now. Go it didn't go in the end zone. zone. Oh, my goodness. And that's not what you wanted to do if you're – the Dragons. It took a bounce to the goal line and stopped on the one. Yeah, Pacmara was the one who grabbed yeah. that, but there was look, there was miscommunication between him and Vasquez on who was gonna who was gonna grab that return. It just died right in front of them, and no one wanted to and get it on the bounce. And and Pacmara was hoping that that would roll in the end zone, but it just kept rolling. <laughs> it's like, it's like it, there was a it's like the ball had a magnet on it, and it was the same side as as the end zone. It just kept pushing away from it. It's gonna be marked. Just shy. Well, they're marking it. Yeah, just shy of the six-yard line. Yeah, and then, and Doug, that yeah, that that's crucial now because now you're back in your own end zone. So now, if you can't get if if you go three and out here, that's that's big. Because you know Hoffman, while he's yeah. you know while while he's their you know, kind of their special teams guy in terms of kicking the ball, you know he doesn't have that big of a leg to really flip the field if you go three and out here. So you have to at least get a first down. Trips left. There Up the middle. And that's a very good start. Goes Ferrero, and it is a good start on first down. He got five. For the most part, Dragons have had their way when it comes to that, comes to those front five in terms of getting that push. And yeah. they're going to, if there's any time where they need that push, it's right now. England checks out, and Acker checks in at a running back position. Yeah, trying to get an extra back in the, in the, in the backfield to, you know, get some extra blocking. Backs in an eye formation to the right of Hill. He takes again. it up the middle, and he's got a first down. Good, good job by that dragon line getting that the, push. Out to the 17. So it'll be first and 10, and it gives him a little breathing. Exactly. Run. Yep. So now you're kind of, kind of back to where you were. If you had returned that ball the right way, you're still inside your own 20, but nonetheless. It takes the pressure off your back a little bit. And you've wasted some clock as well. I know we still got a lot of time left in this game for what this situation is, only up by three. But nonetheless, you know, take your time. If you're LO, you know, the pressure might be on you, but you're still in the lead. Ball's marked on the 17. Under 10 here on the play clock. And the Coach Bell's going to take a timeout here. Looks like they had some miscommunication on who was supposed yeah. to be lined up where. Looks like England didn't know exactly where he was supposed to be in that play. So Dragons will they'll, they'll blow a timeout here. Yeah. Hey, during this sports season, Orion Neighborhood Television will be covering a large variety of games. Our sports coverage will include varsity football, JV football, volleyball, boys soccer, and more. 
select games will be streamed live on dragonbroadcasting.org and will be replayed on our channel, Comcast Channel 10 and AT&T Channel 99. Visit orionontv.org for our program schedule. And next week, the Dragons will travel to West Bloomfield and the following week will be homecoming. The Clarkston Wolves come in for the an <clears throat> excuse me the annual homecoming game. And prior to that, on Thursday, will be the Powder Puff game, which Orion Neighborhood Television will be covering. So first and ten from the 18, T.R. Hill cutting it upside. Good stuff. Up Good stuff, T.R. Got over the 25 to the 27. Gain of eight. Yeah, It'll he, be second and two. Yeah, he turned some water into wine right there. It wasn't a busted play, but Adams did a pretty good job of kind of keeping that play at bay. But again, TR using his athletic ability there. And he, you know, he turned something that looked to maybe only be a two or three yard game, turned that into eight. And, you know, second and two looks a lot better than second and eight. Single back in the backfield, twins right, single wide left. Rochelleau at a tight end left. Barrero. Barrero got the first down over the 30 to the 31. And you know, I kind of compare Logan Barrero to David Montgomery of the, of the Detroit Lions. You know, he's not, he's not the quickest guy, but when you need some tough air, you need to waste some clock. He's, he's, your, he's your cowbell. He's, he's the guy you're gonna give the ball off to over and over and over again. And he just always just falls forward. Yeah, right now, the Dragons just want to get first downs. Exactly. And eat the clock up. Exactly. If you're, if you're like Orion, don't look at the clock. Just keep no. running your offense. Just keep going forward. Keep going forward. Good things will happen. Backs in an eye. TR waiting for that play clock to run down here. Under 10. Takes it up the middle, gets an Dang opening, the gets there it out go. to the 40. It'll be second down and one. Dragon holding that ball high and tight. Again, it's something that Lake Orion preaches is hanging, hanging on to that ball high and tight. Yep. And, and you know, you don't you don't see Lake Orion fumble a lot. Obviously, we've seen one tonight from them, but you don't see them you don't see them lose the ball a lot. You know, that's, that's something that they take pride in. And, and when you're an offense that runs the ball like this, that's Again, ball security has to be your number one priority. And now your playbook is wide open. Exactly. Now, you, now you got a lot of breathing room here. you got a lot of space to work with. I'm quite certain this will be another run. Exactly. Just, again, there's really no reason to pass here. Adams has only one timeout left. Maybe you could run some play action here. But they keep it with Ferrero, the, yeah, there he up goes. the middle, into the secondary, oh, down to the Adams. Oh, he lost the football. As I was just saying, ball security being a virtue for him. Barrero, let's oh, go the football. No. Oh my goodness. It was a really good run, but Adams, they got their helmet on the football, and that ball came out. And now, Adams here with a really, really big chance as we get a look at oh that one. Oh my. I, was, I think it was the announcer's jinx, Doug. I was just preaching how they don't let go of the ball, and. And, you, and yeah, he was already. He yeah, knew he, it. he knew it. He, yeah, he, before he, he even was it. fully on the ground, he, he knew it. But now, his defense has got to back him up here. Three minutes ago. Or excuse me, three it's, three point game six minutes ago. Yeah, six ten to go. Adams takes over possession at their forty three yard line. They come out twins right, single wide left, single back in the backfield is Humboldt. He gets the carry, carries tacklers with him. So for about game. six. Yeah, five, six yard game. That's what I was saying pregame is that's how it's gonna be. It's they're they're gonna paper cut you up and down the field. And they're gonna their schedule, if they can get at least four yards on a given play. You just know. you know, just another Orion Adams game. No, oh, yeah. You know, you know it, it seems like it's always a barn burner. It something always happens to make this game special. Twins right, single wide left, and a wing right. Harris up the middle. Harris, 
for a few. It's going to be third down and one. Again, this is where Adams where they want to be. It's where they want to be, and if they're stopped, I won't be surprised if they go for it on fourth. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're only five minutes ago, we got one timeout remaining. So third and one, trips right, single wide left. Motion this side. Harris up the middle. He did he didn't get did there. not get it? The far ref had him short and near ref had him short too. So now that dragon D line is something that we've been we've been He picked up maybe a half yard and was pushed back. And I, and I think at this point here, if you're like Warren, you gotta just pin your ears back. I, you know, I'm obviously you don't want to give up point, but Doug, at, at this point, it's fourth and fourth and short. You know what they're going to be doing. It's going to be something right up the pipe. They've ran the QB sneak all day to perfection. I think you've got to just send everybody. If, if, they, if, if, if they if they get some deep on you, so be it. You still got a lot of time left. So here we go, fourth and a half a yard from the pistol. Ferris. Look, maybe try to draw him offside here if you're Adams. And, he and got he's it. got the first down. Yeah, again, again, textbook right there from Adams. You kind of knew what was coming. But he, he only had a half a foot. Exactly, yeah, him, yeah. So. It, it, it was going to be tough. He's getting a great look at this from our camera crew. Right up the line, clearly got the first down. That's he's gotten a lot more comfortable as this half has gone on. Yeah, 340 to go here, Doug. And, you know, Adams, they're on the 45. So, But I think you have to probably get to at least a 30 to even consider a possible field goal yeah. opportunity here, but the wind is at their face, so I said they're gonna try to shoot for six on this drive, but. Harris got pressure. Oh, that's a big shot. Oh, ball free, ball free, ball free Doug, ball free. Who's got it? I think. A Ad big sack. Yeah, Adams, Adams got the ball back, Doug, but that ball came free as he was being whipped to the ground. Dragons were trying to get on top of it, couldn't quite get to it, but nonetheless, that is a huge, huge defensive play right there. So we get a look at this. And yeah. that was Nepchuk. That was Nepchuk yeah. in there. He ripped him down. Ball's clearly free. And oh, there was a dragon in there oh, on it. I couldn't see who it was. Looked like it was number 56 yeah. for Lake Warren. He was in there on it, just couldn't quite get on top of it. And somehow, so it Ferris is, able to, was able to get back on top of it. It is second down and 25 for the Highlander. And this is really off schedule for Adams here. You got one timeout, now you have to really push the ball down the field. Double wide, double slot. Looks, throws. Incomplete. Knocked down. Rochelo. And all of a sudden you feel the momentum shifting back towards Lake Orion. It seemed like things were kind of grim. You felt Adams kind of, you know, again, staying on schedule, pushing the ball on the ground. and. Now here, you got them back in third and 25. Ryan Rochelo got his hand in there and knocked it down. Brings up a third and 25. And this is obviously four down territory here if you're Adams, but it's third and 25. And you know Logan Barrero is crossing his fingers. Give me the ball, coach. Hoping his defense can, trips can left, bail him out. Trips left, single wide right. Ferris back to throw, looks, throws, caught on this side. Got to come up, got to make a tackle, tackle got to make a tackle. a couple tackles, it's still going to be fourth down and eight. That was a great, great throw from Ferris right there on the run. Yeah. Had to throw that across his body toward the far side of the field. Clock Cam, it, yeah, clock is still going. We get a replay that. Clock should have been going. Clock wasn't going on that play, Doug, but we get a look at this. Just a great throw off balance over to the right, or the left side of the field. And, you know. Cam DeWood did a great job of breaking tackles and got them really into a manageable yeah, this, conversion. Here it goes, fourth and, fourth fourth and nine down here. and nine, they're calling it. From the gun. Ferris, back, looks, Good throws. Up. Oh, are he, you short? I don't think he got it, Doug. I don't think he got he it. He did not. The bobble, he bob. He had a wide yes. open play, the bobble. He had to come back after he, he lost control yes. of it, and he's going to be short. He bobbled the ball and had the first down and had to come back 
to secure the ball and the Dragons will take over in downs and that sound you hear is the big bullet that the Dragons just dodged. As we look at it, it wasn't the prettiest ball right there. He had pressure no. in his face. He got it off. It was wobbly. It wasn't the best spiral. And that bobble again, it, it forced him to come back for it. And the Dragons knew he didn't get it. The receiver knew he was short. Tillotson and, just hung his head. And now, he knew. And now, though, we were talking about the timeouts. We were talking about the timeout before. They have one timeout left, 151 to go. If they do get the ball back, there's not going to be a lot of time. No. And the Dragons right now will just run the ball out. And, and Coach Bell takes a timeout. Yeah, they could. They were late. They're going to reset. They were late getting the offense out. I think they were all kind of, they were, they were all kind of celebrating that last uh, fourth down. Yeah. But uh, and, but Doug, I know obviously we got a game going on here, but just to right. update on the Tigers. And we know what Coach Bell was telling them. Look. Relax. Go what works for us. Exactly. Run the clock down. But yeah, again, Doug, just to update everybody on the Detroit Tigers, they did win. They beat the White Sox. They are officially so in the playoffs. They are locked in the playoffs. So now How about that? It's going to be a matter. Of they're, now they're going to be scoreboard watching with Baltimore to see if maybe who they'll be playing the wild card around and whether or well, whether not they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll get a home could playoff they, game. Could they get the home field advantage. Exactly, yeah. So they're going to be scoreboard watching the rest of the rest of the few days there. Scoreboard watching Baltimore. All right, offensive line, take charge. This is your time. Here we go, yeah. They, they, they can't kneel the ball down yet. Mathematically, Adams could get the ball back here. Backs in an eye. Yeah, I think this TR is, up yeah, the middle. Keep it with TR. Just Got six. I think, it, I think it's smart to keep it with, keep it with the and guy the, you know who's going to hold on that ball. That's TR. I don't want to jinx anybody again, but the, I think if there's anybody you trust most, it's TR Hill. The clock continues to run. Yep, Adams again, only one timeout for Rochester Adams. So we were talking about, you know, their use of timeouts. If, if Even if they had two left, that still would put them in a way better situation than only having one. Game is not over yet, but a first down here, and that will probably end the game. That will end, end the game. Mathematically, it won't have a chance to get the ball back. So second down and five, they're calling it. TR again, cuts it outside, got a block. Oh, and he slid down. He made slid. Uh, yeah, he's gonna will be, he have it? The far ref has him on the first down, the, but the near ref has him. But a, the head linesman is calling it. He was right at the stick. T.R. Hill thinks he has a first down, but he, I think, he, I think he's going to be a and little Coach, short. And Coach Bell is out there trying to help him with his vision as well. Oh, and, and Doug, I'm going to be honest with you, I think he did slide down a little bit before. Let's see where they mark it. This might have to be a chain game, chain game uh, spot right here. Yeah. Referee is saying, look, We'll make the determination. You guys get back out of the way. And they're saying, where did you see him go down? Yeah, because when, when it comes to NFL rules, obviously it's college, or it's high school. When it comes to NFL and college rules, usually you're down right as you, right as you start your slide. So wherever you start to begin the slide, that's where you're down, not where you finish the slide at. And that looks like they're going, and they're going to go over and explain it to Coach Petrito. The ball is marked on the Lake Orion 45. And this will be a third down and one. And, and Adams just took their last time out. Yeah, and so. So you convert this here, the game's over. Yeah, game's over. And if you, for some reason, don't convert this here and you don't get a yard. You go for it on fourth. I think you do. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you go for it. I think you wait till that clock runs down. Because Adams just used their, again, they used their last time out, so. Mm -hmm. You are one yard and a chalk stripe away from a first down. There we go. I so here we go. Tight formation for the Dragons. Full house, full house backfield. Yep. TR under center. Surges forward. He's got That's the first it. down. This game's over. That'll do it. That'll do it. TR Hill with a good surge from his running backs and the offensive line 
and the Dragons are going to win it. Yeah, uh, Doug, a very good bounce back game. Bradley Gordon, they needed that after the close loss they had last week offered without T.R. Hill. And now you have to think, if they had T.R. Hill for that game, this could have been two undefeated teams going at it. One um, more snap. Yeah, so they'll probably just have Trey Pakmara right back in a safety position. They're one player short. TR under center. Takes a knee. The Lake Orion Dragons have beaten the Rochester Adams Highlanders in a classic. 28 to 25. The Dragons and the Highlanders are now tied at three and one atop the OAA Red. The Dragons will have a huge matchup next Friday night at West Bloomfield. That's gonna be a biggie. For now, for our producer direct, well, no, wait a minute, we have a post game to do. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back. Down on the field after, I guess you could call it a pretty exciting Dragon win tonight. Good old barn burner for sure, yeah. Doug, yep. 28 to 25, the Dragons beat the Rochester Adams Highlanders. And this game had about everything you'd ever want. You'd had, you had turnovers, you had scores, you had a late turnover, you had a stop on fourth down. Exactly. Now we're, they had the first down, they had to come back to secure the ball. This game had everything. Yeah, no, it was a classic Adams Lake Orton rivalry and had everything you could have imagined. Sounds surprised that it went down to the wire. Hopefully, we can get Coach Bell and his thoughts, but nonetheless, Doug, a very great game to be a part of. And I guess, yeah, we're, we're waiting for Coach Bell. He'll be over here, I'm sure, when all the well wishers get done with it. 
and this was, as we said, it's the start of a very important three-week period for the Dragons because they got a really good West Bloomfield team next exactly. Friday night. West Bloomfield, they've always been tough, and they're going to be on the road, hostile territory. And then you got Clarkson, biggest game of the year, homecoming, crosstown rivals. You got to try to get another rival win on the board. It's going to be close when we, when we come down the stretch here towards the playoffs here, Doug. So. We have seen Lake Orion teams in the past. We've seen powerhouses. We've seen teams that combined a little bit of everything. Last year's team wasn't maybe the most talented, but they had a lot of good players, and they went 9-0. and This year's team just gets it done. Yeah, I think this team might be better than last year's team, but nonetheless, you know, I think having that one loss gives them that motivation to really keep pushing forward. And it's always nice to get that first loss out of the way in a way because it gets like, okay, we've got the monkey off our backs now, and now let's just go out there and just and just play. We're looking, as we do every Friday night, for Coach Bell to uh, – head over this way after all the well-wishers are done and to single out some performances. Number one, Jamari Cooper. Oh, yeah. He came up with big catch after big catch yeah. tonight. Yeah, I think both him and Kyle England as well, that both both yeah. the guys on, on the outside, they, that, they got them more involved this game. That's probably the most I've seen them pass the ball around and it, it looked to be good. I think they got some brewing there. T.R. Hill, we expect a great game out of a great player but to come through under the circumstances he did and play the game the way he did tonight it speaks testament about him oh yeah yeah again coming off the injury he couldn't play last week and they lost last week so you know that you know had to be dawning on the whole week like you know i want to show everybody that i'm back i'm good and he looked to be good and they and they didn't really miss a beat with him they still kept the ball on the ground with him as well um he had to be a little bit more smart with how he kind of carries body when he did run the ball so that's good to see so uh hopefully you know we see more of that down down the line here brandon nupchuk on defense he was a wrecking crew out there today. Yeah, as you said, it was nice to have him back, and he certainly took took care of business oh, yeah. tonight. Nepchuk, they needed him. He, uh, he's been he was injured for the first part of the year. He comes back, and he had he had that big sack um, on second down on that last drive for Adams, which forced them in that third long situation, and he made his force known the whole night. So uh, he's definitely going to be a crucial part of this Dragons front seven here down the stretch. Coach Bell is still out in the crowd somewhere. Oh, here comes Coach oh, Bell. Congratulations, Coach. This is why you coach football. Yeah, take years off your life, eh? <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the guys. I mean, this last week was a rough week. I mean, we really, you know, the guys are really down after losing to Oxford. You know, we, we didn't feel like we played as well as we should have. And credit to Oxford for making that happen. So and these guys aren't used to losing. I mean, they, they, they've had so much success the last couple of years that it's a, it was new for them, how, how to bounce back. And I was so proud of them. I think getting off to the fast start, getting the turnover on special teams right away and scoring really quick, I think, was huge. And then it was just kind of back and forth there who's going to make the last play. So, so proud of our guys. Brandon Nepchuk with a huge sack, putting them behind the sticks. Yes. That was a big difference there, that last drive. So, really, really excited for the kids. We talked about Brandon, we talked about Jamari Cooper. He just made big play after big play tonight. Barrero ran the ball really well tonight. And of course, it was so nice to have T.R. Hill back. T.R., yeah, T.R. obviously is a difference maker. And you know, he's the guy that makes it go. I mean, our other quarterbacks, young guys did a great job in his absence and they're gonna be great players, but T.R. is special, no, yeah. no doubt about it. He just, you know, he just makes plays that, you know, I like to say we draw all those up. Sometimes he sees something just takes off or just the throws. You know, the throw to Jamari in the end zone that was something they saw. We The primary route was down the other side, and he and Jamari saw that he had single coverage, nobody in the middle, and they, they checked to the, the bang eight post and got it. So that's what you get when you get a three-year starter, and yeah. Jamari gets, keeps getting better and better every week. Jamari's a stud. Yeah. Next week, it's on to West Bloomfield. Yeah, the OAA Red's a mess. <laughs> Red's you know, a mess. Everybody's got a loss. It. It's a mess. It's like it's the last one standing. We'll see what happens. It's, so. it's, it's the dog fight it is. every we're, year. We're right in the thick of it again. And then this was a big win for us. It's another step towards the playoffs as well. Yep. So, you know, yeah, I'm really happy for our kids. The way we responded, it just makes all the difference in the world. Coach, congratulations again. Good, good luck next week at Thank West you, Bloomfield. So from the field, after a 28-25 Lake Orion Dragons victory again for our producer director, Joey Tysick, Joe Johnson gave us some great stuff from the sideline tonight. Our Student crews from Lake Orion Television Production Workshop, 
Kevin McCormick giving us a bailout on the <laughs> with color this year. Thank yes. you for your help oh, this year. Always happy to do it. Always happy to do it, Doug. I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.